program coordinator Dr. Randy Post, and all the staff members of our college and from various colleges. I welcome all of you to this webinar. The topic is on first applications. Really, I'm happy to learn that this department from our college is organized. Especially the topic is wonderful, rightly chosen. Because we need to study, we need to learn. As I have already told you, the teaching community will never stop teaching. As well as applicable to the learning community. Learning community is also learning here, people, so they should never stop learning. So both teaching and learning topics go hand to hand. So we are in a situation, COVID-19 situation, where we are not able to teach offline. But there is always a possibility to learn online. Indeed, India is now shifting its paradigm to online learning. We are you now forced to learn this. But anyway, this digital learning is important because where we can reduce, reduce the cost but extend our teaching, extend the learning community throughout the world. So it is a platform where we can also develop ourselves, we can also teach many people, teach many people from across the world. So at this moment I would like to thank Reverend Father Secretary also I like to thank and appreciate uh, Dr. J. John Aragra, the Vice Principal, the dedicated person, trusted person. So that is why he is again organizing a webinar. The webinar and the coordinator, Madam Angel Moss, I'd like to thank uh, for the initiatives and also I'd like to thank all the for their effort because at this time they are able to coordinate, they are able to discuss, they are able to plan out systematically and scientifically. So finally they are now conducting, they are now able to do it. So I would like to thank all the staff members of the Department of Mathematics of our college. Also I like to thank all the speakers because they have said yes and we have invited them. They have said yes, they have agreed voluntarily and they are ready to make a contribution. I would like to thank the speakers also, I would like to thank all the participants for your interest, for your interest in learning this subject. So I would like, I like to thank all of you. I wish that this webinar be a wonderful webinar, useful for your life, useful for your teaching. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Now, Mr. Julian Francis, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, will introduce the resource person, Dr. A. Mani Maran. Over to you, sir. Julian, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I, I'm, I'm Julian Francis. I'm glad to introduce uh, uh, today's uh, uh, first session of uh, webinar. Uh, Dr. A. Manimaran, Assistant Professor of uh, Velour Institute of Technology. He has uh, about 10 years of uh, experience in teaching and uh, uh, research. He has guided uh, more than 50 uh, uh, students. More than 50 students. He has uh, uh, conducted several seminars, organized So we are glad to you, uh, your presence, sir. And thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Savita, ma'am. Excuse me, Savita, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I invite the resource person, Dr. A. Manimaran, to give the lecture. Over to you, sir. This is the most important 
at that moment you are thinking We'll wait for him, ma'am. Okay. Sir, I am online only. Ah, yes, sir. Sir, your screen. If you start presenting your screen, sir, uh, you just introduce sir, and please, uh, please uh, show the video, sir. No problem for me. In that okay. itself, okay. I am. Okay, sir. Let me, sir, I, I, I will just give some words, a uh, few words uh, before yes, the presentation. Sure, mm, yes. So I am thanking uh, all the respected dignitaries, and uh, uh, I am. Personally, thanking Dr. John Arakiraj sir because I know him personally already because we met already in Kerala University. Also, Dr. Hen Professor Henson sir and Professor Julian Francis sir, I am very much thankful to you. Uh, so please uh, let me continue the session, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Very good morning to all. Uh, first of all, I am very much thankful to Henson sir for arranging this webinar. Also, I am very much thankful to Julian Francis sir who has given a brief introduction about me. So let me start the webinar. So here our title is Sorry. Introduction to Rafsis. First of all, I'll introduce myself. Myself, Dr. A. Manimaran, Ashton Professor of Mathematics, School of Advanced Sciences, uh, VIT Velo. Mm -hmm. So our title is an introduction to Rafsis and its applications. So my outline today is uh, sets and functions, introduction to fuzzy set, introduction to rough set, and followed by references. So first, uh, let me start uh, what is set and uh, in set, uh, what is the function we are defining, basic, basic definition with some examples. And followed by that, we go for uh, introduction to fuzzy set. So fuzzy set definition with examples. graph representation of it and then we go for rough set and uh, what is the application so today i'm going to give some algebraic applications uh, we have many applications over there i'm just Sir, it's not audible. Sir, Mr. Julian, it's not audible. Two four six eight. This collection forms another set. 
So when we look at this in A1, we have only finite number of elements, four elements are there. So the cardinality of A1 is four and the cardinality of A2, the number of elements in A2 is three. And here the number of elements in A3 is infinite. So here the cardinality of A3 is infinite. If I want to give a general notation, instead of giving numbers, I want to give a general notation mathematically. So that A3 I am writing in another form called A4. There, x collection of x. What is x? x is an even natural number. Another mathematical form also we can give for the same set. If i equal to x such that x equal to 2n, where n is the natural number. So here, <coughs> in set theory, we define a membership function called a characteristic function. How we are defining it? So we take a universal set, where a is a subset of that universal set. From universal set, we are picking some elements. If that element is lying inside the set A, the membership value is 1. If it, it cannot lie, if it won't lie inside the set A, it will take the value 0. So, uh, we already discussed about John Ken set theory, George Kendall introduced it. But uh, many mathematicians were introduced in vague concepts called imprecise. It's not a precise one. So imprecise concepts. Uh, for example, two of people gathered in a public place. So I'm also uh, I'm standing over there and I want to identify any people in my in my opinion. I'm telling that the collection of people I identified. From that I want to identify pick any people alone. So, while picking the young people from the gathering, how we classify the young people? So, based on the age, based on the appearance. <coughs> but here, age bones is given. So, I, my, in my point of view, I say that uh, up to 35, we can choose young people from this age to 35. So, I am fixing the upper bound as 35 years. I am telling they are young. But if the same thing will be given to uh, another guy who is more younger than me, like uh, at the age of 25, 26, uh, some people are there at the age of 25 and 26. So for them, I am giving uh, the opinion, I am asking the opinion from them. So for them, I am going to identify the young people. So in that case, how to identify the young people over them? So, young people, uh, from his opinion, when we check, he says that uh, the upper age limit we can fix as 25, 27, like that. Because his age is 25, so he is telling that 25, 27, up to, up, up to the age only can fix the people who is young, coming under young. So, when we compare uh, the people, while admitting young people from that group, so person to person, it may differ. So the identifying young people is differing from person to person based on the classification of age bones. So there exists the concept of vagueness. Also, if we have a bunch of flowers, different kinds of I mean different flowers are there in a basket. Uh, each, uh, so in that uh, basket, I want to identify beautiful flower. Myself, I like uh, rose very much, so I say rose is a beautiful flower that basket. Suppose if the same thing, uh, the same question will be asked uh, to the another person, he may say that uh, this one, uh, what is that, sunflower is the beautiful flower in this basket because he may like sunflower. Suppose if the same question will be uh, given to another person, um, he may say that this lily is the beautiful flower, this lily is the beautiful flower because he may like lily. So person to person, the concept of vagueness is different. I mean, the concept of uh, choosing beautiful flower is different. So that's what this idea of beautiful, identifying beautiful flower is a vague concept. So finding young people is a vague concept among the group of people. Identifying the beautiful beauty of the flowers, a group of flowers. So that the concept called vagueness rises. I mean, it's not a precise one, imprecise concepts. So, almost all these concepts we are using in natural languages are in physics. Right? Exactly. So, these vague concepts are not coming into the 
classical cell theory, I mean crisp cells. So due to this vagueness, mathematicians are, uh, are uh, very much concentrated about uh, for identifying a set for computer scientists. So this concept of fuzzy set was introduced by Zadeh in 1965. Uh, by uh, by characterizing its membership function. So the function, membership function, uh, when we check, the range of that is contained in the unit interval. It lies between 0 to 1. So at a point, the value of this function represents the degree of membership of the point in that set theory. Uh, so for example, in classical set theory, one can check whether a person is healthy or not by observing him or after doing some checkup, medical checkup, one can say he is healthy or ill. It's nothing but a classical setting. Healthy means okay, one. Ill means zero, that's all. He is healthy or ill. So in that case, we will give the membership value either one or zero. Only this thing. So this comes under classical setting. But how much healthy he is, if you want to check, it comes up in fuzzy cell theory. So, uh, a person is healthy at 70% or 80%, like that, we can say, based on the check up reports available. So, from that, we can say he is 70% healthy, he is 80% healthy. In that case, the concept of vagueness rises. Okay. Uh, so, according to Zardes approach, fuzzy cells are defined by using partial membership in contrast to crisp membership option. Okay, so the fuzzy set is defined in the following way. So we'll see the graphical representation of uh, ordinary set and fuzzy set. See, I take the set A. Um, from the universal set, I'm choosing one element U. If that element U lying inside the set A, it takes one. If that element is not lying inside A, it takes zero. So this is, we are defining that I is the indicator function here for ordinary set. For fuzzy set, we use that I as the membership function here. The P is U. Membership value will be taken by U here. Suppose, if it takes 0.5, it may lie here. If it takes 0.97, it may lie here. So, the range lies between 0 to 1. So, this is membership function of the fuzzy city. Okay. So, this is the graph representation. Okay. Now, the particular way of doing it. So, x be an empty set. I take a subset A, open X. So the A, fuzzy set A is defined as the collection of the ordered bar X comma membership value of X, new of X for any X plus X. So which is characterized by the membership function. The new A of X is a membership function which maps X to 0 comma 1 that goes to 0 comma 1. And satisfying the condition new of X plus gamma A of X gamma A of X equal to 1. The gamma A of X equal to 1 minus new of X here minus sign I must Okay, please uh, include it. Gamma a, a of x equal to 1 minus mu of x is the non membership function. So, mu a of x is the membership function, and the gamma a of x is the non membership function. Yes. Suppose while buying a car, I'm going to buy a second of car. So, I'm taking a be the fuzzy set of cars that you consider for buying it. So, each car you can assign a value between 0 and 1 based on the appearance, based on the performance, uh, based on the age, based on the condition, based on the style, price, so on. Right? So, if, if I buy the car, I do not know much about the car, but I want to buy a second hand car. So, based on the age, based on the condition, based on the style, uh, I am fixing the price of it. I can fix 14,000. Uh, sorry, 4 lakhs I can fix. The original amount of the car, new car is 8 lakhs. I fix 4 lakhs. So based on the appearance I am fixing. So 
I am fixing 50 percentage. That is 0.5. I am fixing the membership value as 0.5 here for that particular item, right? I do not know the value of the car. I do not know much about that appearance of the car. But I, according to the appearance of that, I am fixing. Suppose if a mechanic, car mechanic, is going to buy a car, that a second hand car, based on the condition, based on the style, he, he himself uh, will decide that only this much market price we can give for this. So he may fix only two lakhs. I can give. That is the affordable price for that. In that case. Uh, two lakhs means uh, we say point two. So in his sense, he is telling point two is the membership value. So person to person, it's very so that exists the concept of vagueness. So these are the examples we can see for fuzzy sets. Now we go for one next another uh, set theory called rough set theory. So rough set theory is one extension of set theory. And uh, it's a new soft computing tool to deal with vagueness and uncertainty. So whenever vagueness and uncertainty raises, the concept of rough set theory will be appearing over there. This concept was introduced by Pollock in 1982. This, this concept was implemented to process the incomplete information in the information system. So some information may be missed in the given data. So, uh, that is the uh, vagueness and uncertainty raises over there. For that particular thing, this idea may be Okay, so the concept of offset theory is the approximation space, such as the lower and upper approximation of a set determined by attributes. So, a pair of lower and upper approximation is called a rough set. So, in rough set, the data can be represented in the form of an information system. So, this is the pictorial representation of rough sets. See here, uh, we have a box type figure here. Inside, we have each square, I mean, uh, sub squares over there, I mean, small, small squares are uh, given inside. So, each square is said to be granules of knowledge here. In other way, we can say they are classes, they are uh, different. Dividing into two classes. I mean, uh, while dealing the examples, we will come to know what is it. So, each and every box is said to be a class. In computer science, uh, I mean, uh, in the side of computer science, if we go there, we are using the word uh, granules of knowledge. Mathematically, we say each and everything is said to be a class. Okay, we can say equivalence class. Each and everything is said to be an equivalence class. So, the whole collection. Is said to be collection of objects, a set of objects here. So, this whole collection is said to be U, universal set. And uh, I'm giving a subset S, that is, uh, which is given in the red color, uh, I mean, like ellipse form. So, that is the set X. So, X is the set, which is the subset of this universal set U. Here, this X. Completely lying inside him. Okay. Also, when you observe some of the boxes lying completely inside the set X. So these X, uh, these boxes are called lower approximation. I'm defining graphically now. I'll come to the mathematical way of explanation. And uh, when we observe some of the boxes are giving lying inside as well as giving non-empty intersection with the set X. So, the boxes which are lying completely inside and also which are giving non empty intersection, they are called upper approximations. So, the hell, uh, boxes are highlighted with yellow color and blue color, or all the boxes coming into upper approximation. So, the pair of lower and upper approximations is called the rough set of X. We are defining the roughness of the set. Yes? So, th they are called uh, we can say they are boundary regions also based on this graph. So, boundary regions, we are defining the boundary regions. So, this is lower boundary, they are upper bounds. Right? This is the graph representation. I told each and every box is an equivalence classes. Please remember that while observing the mathematical way of definition, uh, it may be useful to understand this. Okay? This approach provides an efficient algorithm for finding uh, hidden patterns in data. Also, for uh, data reduction, we can use 
and it evaluates the significance of the data, the standardization rules. So maximum uh, we have number of applications uh, of offsets in computer science. Okay. So more many algorithms based on offset theory are particularly suited for parallel processing. And uh, in data analysis also one can use this for identifying uh, for removing redundancies and to generate decision rules. And in computational intelligence, uh, just machine learning, intelligence system pattern recognition, and knowledge discovery expert systems, uh, etc. We can use the concept of Robson theory. So mathematically, we get the definition of Robson. See that? Uh, I told you uh, we are defining in approximation. So what is approximation? From that only we are defining percent. So approximation space is nothing but um, an ordered power of u comma r. What is u is the finite universal set. We are taking u as the universal set which is finite. Okay? And r will be an equivalence relation on it. So we are defining an equivalence relation on it. So the pair u comma r is called a which is known as approximation space. Now we are defining indiscernible relation. The indiscernible relation is nothing but P. That P is a subset of uh, U here. Uh, I mean, so I take uh, in, in P. So in, in P means indiscernible relation. So U cross U, I take uh, U plus part of So X belongs to U and Y belongs to U. The pair X and Y belongs to U cross U. So for every A belongs to P. If the membership value of X and the membership value of Y both are same, then we take that X and Y as a pair, ordered pair. So collection of these pairs comes at a end where Q is the membership function, fuzzy membership function, which is defined from the set U to 0, 1. So the fuzzy concepts we are using here also. Okay, so in reasonable relation, how we are defining it. So we shall call this one as P indiscernible relation and here how we are defining this if any two elements x y belongs to the pair x comma y belongs to p we say that x y x and y are same i mean indistinguishable or a so the partition induced by in p so the partition we are checking induced by in p consists of equivalence classes uh, if x comma y the pair belongs to indiscernible relation then we form the equivalence classes X. In that class, what are the elements are mapped with the X coming into the set? So for uh, all the collection Y belongs to U, uh, such that X comma Y belongs to indiscernible P comes under X over P. Why we are defining P? Because P in, we are defining P indiscernible relation as a subset, P as a subset. So X over P, under this P we are defining this class. So this is equivalence class here. Now we go for lower approximation. Now only we are coming for main definition. Lower approximation. See, I define int p, so indiscernible relation or p. So that's what we are using p lower of x. What is p lower? Lower approximation of the set x. How we are defining it? See, collection of x I am choosing. In what sense? If I choose an x, uh, the equivalence class of this x completely lying inside x. So, equivalence class of x, complete line inside x. So, that is coming at a lower approximation. The classes which are giving non empty intersection with x coming at an upper approximation. It is denoted by P upper of x. So, mathematically, this equivalence class x p completely lying in x. Here, mathematically, this equivalence class x p intersection x not equal to empty. What are the x's are giving non empty intersection? What are the classes giving non empty intersection with this? that x? Those elements we are collecting and we are writing that is upper approximation. You come to this pictorial representation here. See, each and every boxes are called classes I told. This is one equivalence class, blue color inside the set x. I mean, this is another class. These two classes are completely contained in this set x. That's what we say. These two classes are lying in the lower approximation, and uh, including these two classes, some of the classes which are highlighted in the yellow class giving non-empty intersection with the set. So all these classes 
lining side the upper approximation so this is there okay so let me go with the definition of rough set a rough set is defined as the ordered pair which is nothing but the collection of lower and upper approximation the lower and upper approximation the pair of lower and upper approximation is called rough set of x so here p lower of x is called lower approximation of the set x and p upper of x is called upper approximation of x how to define the lower and upper approximation i already explained it okay uh, so corresponding to the set x where x is an arbitrary subset of u in the approximation u comma p so p is the subset of the relation here right so definition of the boundary region now boundary region means see whenever we observe the lower approximation the upper approximation they are not same so when we take the set difference between lower and upper approximation we get this minus is set difference lower and upper approximation i mean from upper approximation we are taking lower upper we are going the lower approximation so we get some elements over there so the, that elements are coming at the boundary region that is the boundary region of the set x if this boundary region is non empty then that set x is called rough set if this boundary region is empty then that set is coming into crisp set so we can say rough set that's what we are telling rough set is one extension of set theory okay see p of rough x minus p lower of x is non empty means then it is rough set if p of rough x minus p lower of x equal to empty that is the lower approximation and upper approximation both are same then that set x is called a crisp set so rough set is different from crisp set we can say the extension of one extension of crisp set is rough set you understand yes we go to the another way of defining rough set based on membership function see already we defined membership function characteristic function and crisp set we define another membership fuzzy membership function fuzzy fuzzy set now we are defining rough membership function instead of using approximation one can use rough membership function also for define to define the rough set so for the given universal set u that is finite i already told you we take any arbitrary subset x u the rough membership we are defining u or of x u or x so u x or uh, u r over x is defined from u to the closed interval 0 comma 1 so for any element x uh, from u we are defining the membership function as cardinality of x intersection r of x by r of x okay where r of x is nothing but e plus class determined by an element x so r of x means e plus classes fraction of e plus classes so this is another way of defining the rough, uh, rough set by using rough membership function okay so rough set can be defined like this also for example we have a table in the next slide which contains the information about patients suffering from a particular viral fever so it's a general scenario please think about a general scenario uh, see some of them were affected uh, uh, from viral fever so they are admitted in the hospital so the patients are uh, are monitored and what are the symptoms they have the symptoms are called attributes here so the objects are patients here the objects are patients and the attributes attributes with the symptoms what are the symptoms we have we can observe from the patients it is temperature stomach pain and body pain but all the patients won't have the same uh, symptoms right some of them may have had that due to their health so some of the uh, some of them are having good health so they may not have had that also but they, the temperature when you observe viral fever means the temperature may be high and stomach pain stomach pain all everyone won't have stomach pain those are uh, affected by viral fever everyone won't have stomach pain so based on the health based on their health or someone can have stomach pain somebody cannot and body pain all those things are attributes this is this these are the symptoms general so the table which contains those data is known as information system or information table right so here we check this is the information table of the patient see we have totally six patients a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 six patients are there for them uh, they are affected with viral fever so for them we are uh, verifying the symptoms 
so headache, stomach pain, temperature, body pain. These are the four symptoms for viral fever. It was fixed in the hospital and uh, they are verifying for the patient one. Uh, when we check, no, there is no headache. Uh, and then stomach pain. Yes, there is a stomach pain for him. And temperature when we check for him, high temperature. High in the sense, maybe 101, like that, or 100. That is a, a case of fever. And body pain, yes, he is having body pain, yes. So, no headache for him. And stomach pain, yes, and temperature high. Body pain, yes. And year two, for the next patient, when we check, headache is there. First case of high and body pain is there. Also for the patient 3, when we observe, uh, maybe uh, he is uh, coming under uh, 60 age, I mean 60 to 60 age group like that we have. For him, headache is there, stomach pain is there and the temperature when we check is very high, very high in the sense it may be 104 or 105 patient taken by the doctor. Right. So some doctor may say, if you go to the private hospital, some doctor will say 102. Oh, very high temperature, like that. In the government hospital, if you go 105, the fever is 104, like that. If they check the temperature, okay, high one, not very high. Like that. So based on the doctor and based on the hospital also, they may say that it is high, very high. So that is that is called a big thing. Okay. So patient four, we have this kind of thing. So he is not having attack and stomach pain is there and temperature is normal, but uh, body pain also not there. 